Right, I will call to order the Sierra Madre Planning Commission meeting of Thursday, June 20th. Can we have roll call? Chair Hutt. Here. Vice Chair Dennison. Commissioners Catalano. Here. Desai. Here. Hefsner. Here. And Spears. Present. All right, I will entertain a motion for approval of the agenda. So moved. I'll second. We have a, mo a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Next is approval of minutes of our June 6th meeting. Did anyone have any corrections or comments? I have none. Good to me. I wasn't here. I'll recuse. Okay. So. I have none. You want to make a motion? I, I will. Okay. I'll Move. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have one abstention. Next, we'll move on to community input. If there's anybody here tonight who would like to speak on items not on the agenda, seeing heads shaking, no, we will move past this on to our public hearing. We have a public hearing tonight for Hillside Development Permit 1203 and CUP 1210. Do we have a staff report? Claire Lynn will be providing the staff report this evening. We also have a pre presentation from the applicant to follow and then we'll uh, go into discussion and then we'll view the the building also on SketchUp using the PowerPoint uh, or the so projection. So we're going to do the first oh. presentation on these TVs, right? That's correct. Okay, great. Thanks. Good evening, chairs and commissioners. The Planning Commission tonight, this evening, will be reviewing a hillside development permit and a conditional use permit for the property located at 638 Baldwin Court, also known as Lot 21. That is continued from the March 21st meeting. The applicant has returned with revised plan to address Planning Commission's concerns. From the last meeting, the Planning Commission asked for a defined architectural style. The architect has revised the architectural style to mid-century modern aesthetic um, to include simplified roof form with 3 to 12 gable and shed roof lines to address the Planning Commission's concern of overcomplicated form from the previous meeting. The proposed project also includes colors, horizontal sidings, and brick material that carry throughout the elevations. Revised design in embraced contemporary elements and styles that incorporate clean lines, large walls of glass, narrow frames, and recessed entrance. Windows are continued and wrapped around the corner and by aligning the projecting flat roof structure over the front door and a shed roof over the garage to introduce horizontalities to the ground floor. With the revised design, the setbacks at the second floor are further recessed and the floor area is reduced to 3,493 square feet. The proposed project is complied with all zoning requirements. The project information here is revised to be consistent with the proposed design. The only changes are highlighted in red. There are the gross floor area is reduced to 3,493 square feet and the setback, side yard setbacks is increased um, to 21 feet 2 inches and 14 feet 11 inches. Proposed side plans remains the same as the Planning Commission discussed last, at the last meeting that the floor plan is successful in providing useful indoor and outdoor spaces. The three oaks at the rear of the property will remain protected in place. So the first floor plan remain unchanged. The second floor plan is revised. You can see at the um, street side, 
the bathroom is rotated to provide further setbacks at the front elevation, the street elevation, and the bed bedroom is, rotate, um, is modified to provide further setbacks at the south. Revised roof plans showing a consistent 3 to 12 gables and shed roof. Sections here shows the proposed project is working with the site and is using the existing, the previously graded um, pad Here's the revised elevations that incorporates large walls of glass and contemporary um, elements like the stacked painted bricks and horizontal siding. Reve revised elevations, and the, these are the rear elevation on the top and the south elevation at the bottom. And the applicant is proposing wood clad windows. Col color elevations here shows again the um, flat structure over the front entrance and the shed roof above the garage, aligning it to give it a horizontal element to the ground floor. Color elevations of the rear and the south. Colors and material that will be used for the proposed project. The architect has proposed natural color, um, earth tone colors that will work with the natural landscape. Photo montage renderings of the street facade um, coming from the south, west. Three D renderings from the north, and a aerial view from the southwest. Another three D view um, from the southwest. color renderings of the street facade. Hillside development permit findings and conditional use permit findings have to be made in order to approve the project. The findings are in the packet for the Planning Commission to make decision. <coughs> the alternative before Planning Commission this evening is to approve the project, approve the project with modifications deny the project, identifying the findings that commission feels cannot be made, and the basis of rejecting those findings, or continue the project and provide staff and applicant with further direction. Staff is recommending the planning commission to approve the Hillside Development Permit 1203 and Conditional Use Permit 1210, pursuant to the Planning Commission Resolution 1908. That concludes my presentations, and we do have a presentation from the applicant. Great, thank you. Do we do we want to do the applicant uh, thing before we do questions? That probably makes sense. Let's have all the presentations. Sure. Okay, great. Chairman Hutt and Commissioners, thank you again for the opportunity to come in front of you and present our project. Um, from our last hearing, um, we understood your comments, we looked at your comments and went back and decided to look at the elevation and take your advice and see, let's try a mid-century um, architecture 
Um, what we liked about it, it's a very simple architecture. I think it's, uh, the forms are classic. And what we did is um, started to look at samples of mid-century architecture just for inspiration. So we started looking at what this architecture is about. It's about low-slung um, roofs uh, with the gable ends. Um, the idea of using um, glass as an expression of spaces and bringing the indoors out. Um, glass starts to take uh, new forms, starts to wrap around corners, starts to um, go from ceiling, floor to ceiling. Um, also introduces uh, forms such as a fireplace and introducing some material, either brick or stone. Um, using some brick as uh, a base for the structure. Um, it becomes a little more playful with the windows, um, which we found uh, it's elements that we could introduce into our project. So in, in looking at um, our elevations, we started to see how we can do this. The first thing we wanted to do, um, one of the comments was our roof lines were complicated. We were playing with different forms and flat and um, sloping roofs. So we looked at simplifying the roof. Now it's uh, a gable from front to end. It's all one continuous roof. Uh, so it's very clean, very simple. Um, you can see, I don't know if you can see this on there, probably can't. On the lower elevation, um, we simplified the whole form, so it's one under one big roof. Um, as well as with the lower um, roof pitch, it actually simplifies the roof, helps to have the architecture in the house sit a little closer to the ground. Um, we played with the, the floor plan so we can introduce uh, larger expanses of glass that are a little more expressive. Um, we started to wrap around the corners with glass and take them up to the roof. On the front entry, on the recess entry, which is a very typical element from mid-century ranch houses, um, we did pull out a small canopy to kind of accentuate the entry and mark um, that this is the entry, kind of a, a nice canopy detail. Um, in the back as well, we tried to take the architecture all the way around, introduce similar type windows um, to play with um, kind of the corner conditions. They usually highlight special rooms, mostly bedrooms. Um, I believe one that's a master bedroom and master bath. The other thing we looked at were colors. We um, tried to soften the colors a little bit more. We did go with earthy olive tones, which are, are very uh, much in, in tune with the mid-century look. Um, they are highlighted by a light trim color, also which is a warm color. So it's not as glaring as white, but it does help to outline the building and accentuate the, the roof line. Um, we also simplified the, the materials. Um, we really now just have one material. It's a, a, a clean horizontal siding. Um, the only introduction of some different material has been at the base at the entry uh, and living room form as well as in the ch uh, fireplace, which also starts to recall some of the mid-century forms. Looking at it in, in this perspective, it, it shows the simplified forms, how they, we feel it fits better into the neighborhood. It starts to relate to the mountain, kind of lead you up to the mountain. Um, I think overall, it, it, it's a much better house, and uh, we appreciate your comments in, in helping with that. Um, with that, uh, I don't know if the SketchUp model you want to bring in later, or after the commissioners have questions they want to address now we we have a sketchup model that i understand we can rotate right correct um so that might be helpful if they're if the questions deal with that or do we have any 
I have some material questions. Okay. Um, on the watercolor rendering of the front, on the garage element, you've got, well, it's called out as a painted brick veneer, um, but it's shown sta stagger, stacked on that, and then on the other, the renderings in the, the elevations, it shows it's uh, st staggered. It should be um, straight. Stacked, and right? Stacked as it fits, it's more in fitting with the period. Okay. And then the question I had was, why did you go with a painted brick veneer? It's a veneer, right? It is. Okay. As opposed to like, like a v masonry veneer that's like burnished or just exposed, like, I mean, we like a trend we with that product. as well. We wanted to go with a cleaner um, look with the brick, so it's. Um, I mean, we can brick. There's different forms of brick. There's a, a one that's a little more organic, has a little more roughness to it, or else also there's a cleaner brick. We were, our direction was going with the cleaner brick and then also going with the painted, so it's just a very clean, um, subtle texture. Yeah, it seems like if you wanted it, well, anyway, that's a comment. Okay, that, that makes sense. Um, and the garage door, is that just uh, sh a sectional, like sheet metal, just painted? Like, um, what's the garage door? We're looking at um, a flat panel, maybe wood door. Wood? wood. Okay. If we can, I think it'll be much better. Like but horizontal slats, or is horizontal it horizontal slat? Panel. Very panel, simple panel. Okay. Um, and you said the windows are aluminum clad, or wood clad. So they're aluminum on the outside, wood on the, wood inside. On the inside. Is this color? Does the product come in this color? Because it's calling out like a Benjamin Moore color. Is it? Are you? You're not painting the windows. No, we're not. We're um, going to match as close as possible to that color. Okay. All right. Okay. That's all. Other questions? I have a couple of things I'd like to, to, to talk about. Um, uh, one is, uh, first of all, I'd like to compliment you because I think that this is a tremendous improvement over what we saw before. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I feel like every bit of simplification that you did is really worthwhile here. Uh, it, there's, there's one little detail that jangles me, and, and that is uh, on the front elevation, that little horizontal bathroom window, it's, it, it looks kind of like, oh, we had to put it in there. Uh, can, you, can you do something else with it, like a little vertical well, yeah, slit or well, something? We, we looked at that. Um, in, we actually studied it uh, quite a bit because we, we played with different forms. Um, to do a, a, we felt doing a vertical window once we started putting that, and we had that originally, felt, um, felt out of place on that mass and not in proportion to that mass. So then we started playing with, uh, mid-century, a lot of it is, part, is playing with um, horizontal f lines and different types of windows, so we thought we can play with a ribbon of glass that sits over the top area. So it does turn the corner and creates kind of a, a form there. We also um, repeated that on the side elevation with another, another back. I saw that, right. yeah. Wait. When I, I actually, the, the window sort of stuck out at me as well, and when we do the sketch up, maybe we can look at some of those, because it seemed like you've got some of them, you know, that follow the, the gable roof up, and then some of them are very vertical, and some are very horizontal, and I just didn't, I mean, other than being useful for the internal program, I didn't really see how that worked on the outside, and, you know, I'm, I'm not as versed as the architects here to understand how to fix that, but I looked at it and I went, huh. So maybe when we look at the SketchUp, we can, we can focus on that. Yeah, the, uh, the, fix, the fix, if not, I have one other, one other thing to discuss with you, but uh, if, if nothing else, the fix is to, is to scratch the windows and put a little skylight in that bathroom. Mm. Uh, mm. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> we did strong. Uh, because that's tried, probably right where the tub or shower is, right? We're doing it in right over the tub shower. So yeah. it was a way to play with the form with the, the window configuration. You uh, or else we have a, a vertical window would have to be about three and a half feet over. Right. 
So, but, what, but I mean, you could do a vertical window, but the question really, it's a privacy issue. Yeah. Um, but usually you can probably get away with starting something at like five feet. Uh, what's the ceiling height in that in that bathroom? Probably eight. You so can I use mean, obscure you could, glass. You could go, yeah, but that the problem with that is that then it really draws attention to that window because right, it's right. like white glass and everything else is clear. Like having done this trick, a million times. Um, it, it may take exception project. to that <laughs> if you if you have the right kind of obscure glass. I'm doing a project right now where we have to retrofit that way, and and you don't even notice it, uh, <laughs> uh, where the obscure glass is, well, I mean, is introduced. It is a good solution, but I I don't know. I just it always makes that thing stand out more than the rest of the windows around it. But you won't could argue there aren't you, that you, many. You won't windows. notice it. Did the um, does anyway. the bathroom ventilation and whatnot? Yeah, uh, make it so you couldn't take, just keep the horizontalness, but go up to the gable, like to sort of at least match the top of the other sign. Well, so that's what I'm saying is like between but five and eight, that's three feet, mm -hmm. and you have probably this is probably maybe 18 inches. Two, f I don't know what that. Oh, the window, it's right probably now. 18 inches. So you could you, you could effectively double the size of that. So it's it's well, yeah, like but three if, feet tall. If, if the top sort of reflected the the gable, like the full length one on the other side. Well, you can do that, but I think he's got a flat ceiling in here. Like, yeah, see, that's why I was wondering if that was feasible. But that, that is could play with awesome. extending it from its current location, which is about, I think it's six, six, eight, or the bottom of that window. Oh, you can drop it down. We could, but then since it's right over the tub, shower location, as a shower, people might feel a little uncomfortable. Five, six, five, five, six. Locations. It's gotta be. It's gotta be right here. Like <laughs> right. We it can uh, be as low as like right. It, so we could play you with. You can. That. You can. Okay. Do we, we have right. the? But anyway, the the, the, the I, model. I get to my second. But you second okay. Point. Wait. Wait. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't realize. You know. Uh, it will. We'll I'm surprised. This one all I'm night. waiting to see what you're gonna. What your second thing is because there's something that I'm. I'm surprised time. doesn't bother. All right. Well, let me shoot through this. Okay. okay. Go ahead. All right. When, when we're when we're talking about the uh, the windows uh, for the window walls in the in the larger rooms, mm -hmm. and where you take the uh, the glass up to to follow the rake of the uh, uh, the the roof framing which is great. I see where you got that, okay. Uh, uh, it, was done, it was done back in the 50s and 60s all the, all the time. I'm sure you looked at a, at, at a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, Joseph Escher, right. Eschler, rather. Um, the, the, one difference, the one difference is, uh, and this doesn't shoot it down, but the one difference is that we didn't have the same seismic uh, in, in structural rules that we we did then, which would affect which would affect the thickness. Two things: the, the corner post, number one, uh, where you where you turn, and and the other is the thickness of the um, uh, the roof structure up there. Uh, you you drew this very very nicely with the the glass coming very delicately up to near the roof line. Um, by the by the time you um, uh, you get this structured and you introduce the required amount of insulation now, uh, mm -hmm. are, we, are we going to suddenly have a, a really horse face kind of detail or are you going to be able to do it so that it maintains that slimness? This is my concern here. Right. And I really, I really like the way it's drawn. Okay, don't get me wrong, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a solution on that one. Well, you're spot on that it's, it's, it's drawn a little thin but it's going to be 12 inches the framing is going to be at a minimum 12 inches mm -hmm. all the roof structure it's got to be worked on to it's going to be 12 uh, to, to know that you can deliver it when and he can he can do this detail because he's going to bury his header he's not really going to have a header but because his roof joists are going to be his header and he's right. going to double up right right at the end wall and then he's going to cantilever out for his rake so in a 12 inch, he's going to bury his header in the roof framing for all the windows. And the posts, I don't know what your wall thicknesses are, but it's probably a five by five, a six by six. Correct. So you're probably using two by six for your wall framing. For that area, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's it's just it's a detail that I don't know how we want to address it or not address it here at the commission level, but uh, it it is a detail that is really going to uh, to, make the, to make the make the house. And that's something we can work with our structural engineer to make sure that they take that into account too. It's basically a flush header. Yeah, it's a detail we we the engineer puts on. We should the think seat. if there's anything we can or want to say as a, a matter of condition about right. that detail. Okay. I have a, done. a couple simple questions. I like simple questions. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. We'll see. The, the, in the backyard, you put a four-foot wall on the hillside. I'm looking at uh, drawing A2.3, uh, section guides. Was that in the previous rendition? It was. Our landscape hasn't changed from the previous um, version. Okay. And the other question I have is, is more of a personal curiosity. In order to modify bulk and massing, we don't count any subterranean floor space. And it, I am personally puzzled by the decision-making process of not including that or not taking up that. Can you help me understand how that decision is made? Because we're, yours is not the first project that has passed on the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of interested in finding out, it seems to me. And there is a reason. Um, we did think about that on the previous submittals on another lot. We did utilize the basement. Um, it's more of uh, programming um, that has affected uh, the reasoning, uh, making the decision, because in order to remove some of the mass up above, really it would have to mean bringing some of the bedrooms downstairs. Um, having a bedroom in the basement is not the most attractive for some people. Um, they don't want to feel like they're buried because you would have to have light from a light well. So you, your views would be limited. Um, so as a selling point, uh, it's a difficult thing. So um, we didn't want to have that basement option or basement on the plants we were working on, or at least on all of them. So we did do it on a previous one to help with the massing. This one we felt playing with the floor plan and being able to develop more of an L-shaped lot uh, plan would help in order to bring down the massing as a, a big, a larger house. Um, so that's where it came. It's really more of a marketing and preference for home buyers. Okay. So it wasn't done for financial reasons? No, not in this particular reason. It's more, um, you know, you could probably get away with uh, an extra den or, you know, room down there, but in order, the, we don't have that space up above that we can bring down. It would have to be a bedroom, and that would be the reason. Okay, thank you. Okay, do we want to launch the model now? Oh, there it is. All right. I'm going to have to move back a bit. It's going to be a lot. So we are going to pass two properties, the Spanish house you see on the right, or Mediterranean, and then a craftsman, and then we will get to a uh, proposed project, as you can see here. So, Vincent, the, the shapes are just ones to come? Yes. And the, the detailed ones are ones that have been approved? Been approved. Okay. Right. Thank you. In the model, we tried to reflect um, the proposed landscaping in terms of trees and show some of the existing trees and the proposed trees. Yeah. That was that little slope that we just walked through.
what I'm going to do is switch over because it's difficult to see and rotate with all the vegetation. So the front elevation, you can see the stacked stone or the stacked uh, brick veneer, horizontal siding. You see how the corner windows are addressed. You see, the thing I was wondering is, <clears throat> if you look at the that window right there in the corner, it, there's the a horizontal element, no, the one to the left, um, that where you've got a, a bank of vertical windows, and then you've got the trapezoidal windows above it. Is if you could just sort of mirror the trapezoidal part without the vertical ones over to the right, instead of having that horizontal. I, I don't know. The problem is it, it, you, you that bedroom's vaulted. So there's no horizontal ceiling in there, I bet. Right, right. Uh, um, the plan on the bathroom was to have a flat so he, ceiling. So he'd have to go to a vaulted, which, or you could just vault where the, where the shower is mm -hmm. and then drop down. We could. I mean, Does Now that one, one yeah. thing as we looked at that window, because that became one mm -hmm. of the areas we studied the most, because mm -hmm. when we had just the one window, it, uh, or a vertical window, uh, it just felt out of place in that mass. Mm -hmm. So we looked at this, we played with the size of the window. Um, the, uh, there's a possibility of taking it up to um, the underside of the roof. But I think one thing that might happen is all the windows will become very similar. So the elevation will be, I think it's nice to have uh, something that breaks those windows so it becomes still these windows are special once you start having them everywhere that window detail I think falls apart um, there's I, another option is that you could put a window in that looks like the others and just it, it would not go through the, the inside it would just be I mean, an exterior window that that was on the outside face of the of the, of the house alone I mean you could do a spandrel window um, if that's what you, you're saying. I, I'm I, not an architect. I mean, what I would do there is, I think John has a good idea. Well, first thing, the front the front part, how it's horizontal, is that on the short leg of the tub? Um, Meaning, like, you could shorten that so that it's not so long, because that's part of the problem is it's it's whatever, 18 inches, but it's like four feet long. It actually extends beyond the, the, the short side, so we could shorten it. I think it. you might want to think about shortening that. I mean, they're operable, right? They're awnings or something? Yes. Okay. One of them would be, the other one would be fixed. Okay, so I would shorten that and then look at however low you feel you can go, you know, five, five, six, whatever, and then stretch it up to, is eight feet under the outrigger, or is that... Where's where's the eight foot line under Actually, the structural the top outrigger? Top of um, the window is eight, if I recall correctly. So that would be the. Eight so what what's the bottom of the outrigger, on the corner? Um, Another foot, nine. Maybe nine. Let me see if I can see it here on the drawing. What I'm getting is you could push the windows up to the underside of that and then stretch it down mm -hmm. and then suddenly it becomes proportionally more of a square or rectangle you know it'd be like three feet tall three and a half by whatever three feet in both directions so then it starts to proportionally it's more like these vertical windows than it is its own shape mm -hmm. well i i was just wondering why, why also why the, the the vertical windows have the 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 mullions in them, and then this one is just clear. I don't know, but well, I guess that's not a mullion. What that what that is is a. Those are just two separate windows. Oh, so those are actually the frames. Those are the frames. Okay. They're mulled together. But in any event, you've got you know these vertical lines, and then you've got this just clear horizontal. It and also when we rotate it, when when that the sister of that one on the corner shows up somewhere, and then there's just all a bunch of vertical ones. I don't know. It just I mean, I, I mean, I have to say, like, that's not atypical for this style, like that, mm -hmm. that horizontal. I mean, what, what's more integral to the style, to this sort of style, is the corner window, like mm -hmm. that treatment of the corner. 
and and I can appreciate the fact that they're actually going to change the corner to match the windows as opposed to slapping on more siding material, you know? Right. So like that that sort of detail is I don't, don't want to say quintessential, but it's very akin to that style, you know? And and so that even that the treatment of the bathroom window is very is is stylistic like they're done that way all the time and they don't match the rest of it i mean there's there is sort of i don't want to say eclectic nature but like sort of the geometry doesn't have to be all the same you know um we did feel the horizontal aspect of that window starts to tie in with the canopy at the entry so it's this well, horizontal let's talk about that because <laughs> i don't i don't get that like i get what you're trying to do but in reality what you have in a really small space is like two ceilings you've got the roof and then like two feet below it you've got this trellis piece like what would have been cooler and more strongly tied to this style was to take that roof and cut basically a hole in it and create a trellis inside of it like a gregory Ains sort of you know you you've seen those in Mar Vista where like right. he's got a roof floating out in a big hole and a tree coming out right, from it. Right, right. Like just take like from that wall and treat the roof as a port like a trellis element coming across and then what you should have is just like another outrigger on this post and it's just capturing those those ends, you know. So that vertical post, there should be an outrigger coming out like the third one. And that little trellis thing, I think it's more trouble than it's like like it's not getting you anything it's just lowering the ceiling in there well it's it's making, but it's also captured by another roof right. it's but kind it's of making funny. really nice places for birds to live <laughs> yeah well, I, would, I mean uh, uh, maintenance i think you've got yeah no i agree i don't have any problem if they want to if they want to do that uh i have two concerns uh however and and that is the relationship of the corner of the garage um uh eve to to that uh, I, I don't know if they're banging on each other. It's an unresolved. Oh, right back detail. there. Yeah, right back in there. That's that's got to be. Uh, it looks like they miss each other because they should be aligned horizontally. Uh, they should have some kind of relationship mm. rather than rather than just be a near miss. Uh, the other thing is, I, I think that the, uh, the, the the corner post there is uh, is a, is a little diddly. Uh, you know, something that is something that had a little more detail or uh, more substance to it, or maybe, maybe if it, uh, uh, for instance, the brick, the brick or stone base were were carried over uh, as the yeah. the base for that column, something. But it it just looks like a toothpick sitting there. Do you have that, room for that though? Huh? Yeah, is there enough room know. for that? Yeah. I don't know. I think that's. I mean, yeah, I, I get that. But if it was like a six by six. For this style, like you had a lot of, I mean, mid-century homes are known for their really light structure and they're really spindly. I mean, to their detriment, like now, because like you would never build them that thin today. But that was part of the magic of those homes was like, there's like nothing in them. They look floaty. Yeah. <laughs> they look floaty. They look right? floaty, yeah, but yeah. it's because the structure was very uh, sparse. <laughs> um, Part of, I think, what you're reacting to, too, is it's very tall relative to its um, width, the post, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I think if it had an outrigger coming out on the end, dump that trellis thing, perforate the roof part there and make that a trellis, that would be a strong, um, I mean, you got to detail that, right? But you, you definitely could get away with that. You could have fun designing that. Yeah. I mean, you could even put a steel, like, around. Yeah, too, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, but even a square would work. So I think that's kind of funky. It needs a little more attention. It, it may very yeah. well turn out to be steel by the time it's, it's all engineered. So uh, 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 a, round, a round steel yeah, that'd be column cool. would. I don't know. Uh, I, I could good. go for that. I think the base, I like, I really strong, I mean, I just, I don't know. I have a visceral reaction to just painting brick, like, I get it, but if we're gonna put like a stone or a veneer, like let's like let it be its stone veneer. Like let us see the aggregate in that like brick, you know, not brick, but like 
basically CMU, but like a veneer version, you know. Um, Trendwitz got tons. Orco has a whole line of veneer. Like you can basically get burnished block, and it's an inch seven eighths thick, you know, and by four by sixteen or whatever, and you just stack it. Um, it looks really good. I mean, I think you no, should, it's a, it's a and that, and, and I think you want that diversity and that material because everything is. Like the siding is going to be homogenous in terms of it's just going to be one color and it's wrapping the whole house. The windows have a different material and it sets it off from the siding. But then you, you've you introduced this veneer, this stone. It'd be nice if it had some texture and that you could see that instead of it becoming a monolithic plane by being painted. You know, um, And I would, on this side, I would recommend raising that up like, take it up to the bottom of the sill or whatever like that stone because I mean you're gonna spend money on that and then you're gonna plant all of it in front and you're not even gonna see like in in the elevations I didn't even know that that was there because I, I didn't it was all blocked by by green like and I get that it wraps around here yeah that it seems low do we even need that I think it kind of grounds, like it ties into the fireplace on the other side, and so it's kind of nice, but like... Yeah, just leave it there. It's fine. I think it needs to be a little bit higher. Like it should at least touch the bottom of the window sills. Like there's, there's no need to have one strip of siding there. Like bring that up. So it's basically like siding, window, stone, you know? How how see-through are the windows? I mean, they're, they're sort of standard, just clear windows you can see clear into windows. the living room. So they all have some window coverings on the inside. But but on this part, you'll sort of, you'll get the feeling of openness. To, it to would. See, yeah. Is that going to, I'm just wondering, is the, the heaviness of the garage door going to? I mean, this is a case where you could you could do this same if it's wood see that's the thing it doesn't really like right now i'm thinking it's like a metal sheet metal panel door but if it's a wood treatment you could throw some lights on the top section you know i mean they have them like glazing yeah they have little rectangles so it at least lightens that you know well if you're um, gonna do that horizontal thing up there with that I don't know. Maybe that just makes it well, worse. Uh, that's. You're, are you saying that do that on the garage door? Yeah, mm -hmm. you can. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah the hor I mean, it sort of echoes the horizontal of that. That one, I don't know. We could bring that down into. Well, no, you just do it on like one side, just mm -hmm. like in a row, because it's right. broken up into a grid, right? right? So you can put anything you want. We can continue that, almost that that's size along, yeah. along the edge. Okay, we picked apart the front for a while. Can we rotate them? Uh, let me just let me make one quick comment, and that was that you had a, I, I think something about that bathroom window that you said before was probably most important of all, and, and that is that regardless of exactly what the shape turns out to be in the end, that it would really be worth looking at what happens if you move the, the head up on that so that it engages the outrigger instead of just floating there. I, I think that that might. Yeah, it'll that be like that corner. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, I, I think that that could engaging it uh, maybe would would help a lot. Maybe half of oh. half of the the visual problem is just that it's it's not so, anchored. Yeah, it's so free floating in there as opposed to being anchored like all your other openings are. I mean, we oh. were trying to align them, having them align with the same heather height, so that could be the. Yeah, but you don't really have that because like. That lot you're talking about where the two window like on the rake where window all together. Yeah. yeah, but you can break your own rules once you're not going to read that. So you're going to read. You're going to read. I wouldn't worry about that. I really wouldn't. The last comment on this before you spin around. Think about like the front door. Like pick, like a color or something like like yeah, the part of this style is like that. There's some expressiveness to like. The front door you know like even if you put like a vertical light in it or something like I know you're not being strict mid-century but like like brown front door like pick a complimentary color and give it give it Good. some identity I think too if you what you were talking about simplifying the the, the overhang there it would help pop the entry yeah. by accenting the door 
All right, you can spin. Yeah, the uh, uh, the door definitely would not have been brown in in mid century. Uh, the modern uh, uh, there might there might be a glass side light next to it. Okay. Uh, the, and you know, oh, yeah, yeah. in reality, that trellis would continue through the foyer on the inside, yeah. too, right? Yeah. Yep. I got no problem with that elevation, other than the engaging the bathroom window. Yeah, it's the same condition. Yeah, this th that that one window is just a little weird to me, but I like everything else. I do too. I like that little pop out second floor. That's kind of nice. What do we call it? Juliet balcony. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the Juliet balcony, but the. Why did you choose to stop the stone, like wainscoting, just ha just having it on that one face as opposed to bringing it around? Because that siding is going to get beat down there. It will, though the siding is, you know. Um, I know it's cement. Yeah, it holds up very well. We just thought on that particular form it needed a base because it's a, the larger um, mass. Wanted to tie it down to the ground. The, the windows, the, the French doors, they're going to break through it anyhow. So if you copied it around, it would get cut up. Yeah, even if it went from that side around, but it's going to get destroyed at that lower. I mean, I don't even see the need for it right there, but that's fine. The other thing is that on this elevation, you've you've really got to change in the the el the, the contour right. of the land, right? So you're a lot, so you're gonna only see, you're gonna lose like about half of the first floor that you'll even see. Correct. Because right. I was thinking about the whole issue of following that around, and it's you're not gonna see it whether you put it there or not. Mm -hmm. That was one of the reasons for um, changing the plan, so we got the two-story element closer right. to the north side. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I think that's really putting the massing in the right place. Yeah, I got no problem with anything I'm looking at here. Yeah, like see here, uh, this corner, the front corner, like those are the little things that just bug me. Like extend that chimney so it, that little sliver of siding like, between the window and that like, like pull that like flush. Like to move the to touch the window in the chimney. Yeah, or make the gap bigger, or and I would just pull that so that that chimney corner just came out from like right next to the window. Yeah, no, that's easy to do. Exactly. To and then raise the plinth, the stone up to the sill, basically. Just just eliminate that little bit of fussiness there it would actually have the it have the effect of of, of making um, the, the the stone base uh, have some have some visual reason not just look like a, a an add-on piece yeah uh, you're correct we should it, it should really be engaged that way yeah. uh, so you're saying that the window is extended to, to hit the chimney and the base. No, yeah. the chimney, no. Comes up, chimney comes over to touch yeah, that. Yeah, and, and that comes up, up to, to the... Right. But the point is there's, there's none of this little... Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, Okay. No, that makes this a lot more sense. It never thing. looks good. It's just a... F it's hard to... F I don't know. Just messy. You know, it's if it, it, scrap side. If all that stuff I is know. open, <laughs> it's going to make... Uh, yeah, I like that look. I agree. 
you gotta paint it, cock it, do all this. Like it's just you don't do home maintenance. I do, but <laughs> <laughs> so you build. What, you know, I, I like that because I I design with home maintenance in mind. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well. Cool. Shall I close this queue? Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, that's good. I, I really appreciate seeing this. It's, and I also think it's really helpful to sort of drive up the street where you get to see how the houses yeah. look together. And then also, even though we don't have the other ones approved yet, um, at least we have the concept of the massing. of how. That, so it really gives you an idea of how these houses are going to fit in together. I think that's really helpful. So thank you for that. I would uh, I would like it if uh, uh, if if we're generally uh, generally pretty comfortable with this presentation, but if uh, we're going to do anything else with the uh, uh, with our our comments, uh, that we ought to specifically um, uh, state or go on the record that uh, the design is the design uh, as it is right. Right now, and in, in that we would we would limit anything future if if we don't just approve it as is tonight with conditions. Uh, if he's got to come back, that the um, uh, that he's going to come back only to discuss the adjustment of these kinds of, well, of details. Before we get down there, let's see if there's anybody else <laughs> who wants to give us testimony. Cause okay, because maybe cool. maybe it might change your mind. <laughs> with that i will open the public hearing to anyone else who would like to speak the lawyer didn't hear the if i said there i i missed the if so now i'm, I'm i want to make sure we get this testimony no okay um we'll close the public hearing and we'll bring it back to the commission now now, now that we've heard all that important Sorry. extra testimony <laughs> why don't you start us off joe <laughs> make sure you look at that because i want you to see the roof and i think they've got a board here yeah, I know what we're going to say about the. I, I know what we're going to say about the, the roof because you know that that's one of my pet peeves. But Wait, is that the board? Is that the? Because yeah, I just want to see. Can you call out a specific, colonial something or what? Um, gray. Gray. Is it on there? Uh, which is this one here? Can you bring it up? Uh, which one is it? It's, um, oh, right this, there. This one here. It's a bigger example of it. Ah, uh, shoot. Do you want to see it? No, I, I can see it. Oh. Thanks. Is this one right here? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's country gray, but there's a larger piece here. Oh, right. this piece. OK. So we tried to get a, a warm tone. Well, the green is it. It's got some green in it, yeah. Well, it is basically, John. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you go by the the old Lutheran Church, which is now the the housing project, uh -huh. and, and go look at the uh, go look at the uh, the color of the roof shingles there. Uh, you you will see uh, very very significantly lighter color uh, as asphalt shingles. I think that's a good example to point out to people. Uh, although as as much as I as, as much as I will beef about certain kinds of sustainability issues unless we we have it codified somehow it's just a it's just a comment yeah right I, I would like to see some some of this stuff codified at some point in the future should we are we giving our comments yes or? okay I'll, I'll start off I mean I think this is a very appropriate project um, considering where it's come and all its iterations, I think you did a fabulous job of kind of calming it down, simplifying it, and, and it has an identity. Like last time we saw it, I think it kind of didn't know what it wanted to be, and I think you've really honed in on something and taken some of our feedback and really applied it. I think that's, you know, that's all we can ask for. I think this, when I look at this, you know, from all angles, I, I see a house that's, you know, mid-century modern, trying to be, you know, in that very simplified and clear sort of lines. Um, I think the front, I, I enjoy the front um, probably the most, f the front and, and the back to some degree, but how you, you've replicated the same roof forms and as it marches up, it sort of cascades to, to the ultimate uh, sort of ridge and peak there. 
And I kind of like it. It's got a nice rhythm. It sort of steps back. And I noticed on sort of the march up the street, all the houses, that south elevation, it sort of kind of came in to a point, meaning the mass sort of stepped inward, which I appreciated. And, and the high side, which is the north side, I think you're only going to, like you said, see only yeah. part of the ground floor and most of the second floor. So um, that you, most of your mass is located on that. So I think this is tremendous. I think the windows, like, you know, I, I appreciate that you, you, you could have easily done just rectangles, really tall rectangles, and left sort of a little bit of a header sort of piece there. But like true to this style, you took those and made them rake windows that went all the way up, you know, and that's, um, you know, having specified this a lot, like that's not a cheap detail. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if someone was gonna cheap out, like that would be not, you wouldn't, that top window is gonna cost you as much as that bottom, you know, <laughs> um, just because they've gotta do this to it. And so I think, and there's some tricks with the framing that you have to do to hide your headers and all that. So, I, and I appreciate that, you know, I think there's something squirrely with the entry, but I think you, you can easily resolve that. Um, the garage door, give that some thought because it is a prominent like element in terms of just a visual sort of block of color or, or whatever it is you know so if it's a wood sectional door that'll be fine you know I would, I would introduce some lights into it like we talked about um, think about making the front door a color um, give it some identity you know you talked about sort of in the green family trying to pull that um, in some of your colors you know maybe you I'm not saying a Kelly green door, but like an avocado green or something, you know, like pick pick something that fits, but has a little bit of pop to it. So, I mean, I think it's a good project. Um, strongly suggest the stone on the garage and around the side is stacked and is a stone that we can see the aggregate in, or, you know, if it's block, you know, we can see that and don't paint it. Um, I think that would help with the natural feel of the house. Um, but all in all, I think it's good. I can I can stand behind this. So I had to go back and look at the previous iteration uh, so I could figure out what had, what had changed and what had moved. But um, I also looked at the previous discussion and um, so in the previous discussion, uh, my fellow commissioners uh, said uh, the building appears to be more massive than the floor plan, and he advised uh, revising the floor plan to and, and use more usable open space, and also it's a good location to, to utilize mid-century modern style, which you did, um, and, and consider continuing window frames at the corner, which you did. Uh, Commissioner Catalano talked about the design, be the previous design being too busy and to simplify the forms and the color palette, which you did. And um, using two, two siding materials, which you, which you did. And, you know, we have a building right across the street from, from us, the Kensington, which most people thought that that would never get done. And uh, the developer came to us and worked through numerous meetings and revisions and listened to feedback and lo and behold the building is built. So uh, I applaud you for listening and actually we find it very refreshing because a lot of times our comments are go unheeded and as a result there's not a lot of progress in the in the in the in the project. So um, you listened to the feedback and you incorporated it and um, uh, I'm impressed with the results, so I can support this project. Uh, to everything else I've already said, I only want to add that I'm, I'm uh, uh, adding support to the idea of working that front entrance, uh, front entry door a little a little better. Uh, you, you know, the house the the house that you all approved on North Lima Street. Um, uh, just up from from Montecito, mm -hmm. uh, before I came on the commission, I you know, just had a, a blank black door, mm -hmm. and uh, you know similar to what we're seeing here, black 
dark brown door, um, uh, it really falls flat. If you go by and look at it, it's like the the weakest the weakest part of what otherwise is a, a, a pretty good a pretty good building. Um, I, I would like to uh, to really see some consideration given not only to the to the color uh, that was a traditional mid-century modern move uh, uh, that that Joseph Escher and, and other people had had, had uh, Eschler had had, uh, had really done very successfully, uh, but but maybe. Uh, instead of it just being a simple cutout that uh, there, it might want to be like a, a full height side light next to that door which engages the corner and the door frame similar to what we were talking about for the, uh, for the fireplace window. Uh, uh, that, uh, that would really give an awful lot of life to that, to that entrance. Um, uh, otherwise, I want to echo what everybody else has been saying so far, uh, and, and that is thank you uh, for for working on it. Um, uh, you know, let's let's close in on the final solution uh, right now, and uh, uh, pretty nice job. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think for what it is, um, I'm not a big fan of mid-century moderns, but that's, you know, I, I think some of the examples he gave with with one level, I looked, I liked even more preferably, but given the, const, you know, constraints in your explanation about the basement, I can see why you'd shy away from it, and I think you, but you, and, and you basically took away the asymmetries, the busyness, the awkward busyness that we criticized, and made fixes on everything that we suggested, so other than Maybe yeah, paint the door colors to give it some pop, so there's some eclect more uh, an eclectic look to the neighborhood, which is what I was focusing on, because I feel like we're gonna live, we're gonna have to live with this, what this looks like, and there's been a lot you know of water under the bridge for how what superior designs we would like to see in this area and what the neighborhood's gonna look like. I think it adds to the one that's already been approved. It's it's certainly different enough, and it gives some. Um, you know, variegated look to what the neighborhood's going to look lo look like. It makes the next project maybe a little more difficult because then you got to think of you can be more creative. But <laughs> with all the hard work you've done, I think I can support it with uh, my colleagues' uh, suggestions. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, I wasn't at the March meeting, um, but I can say this is definitely a huge improvement over the version at the December meeting. And I also congratulate my uh, commissioners for uh, good advice at the March meeting because I think it produced a, a good product. Um, I did watch that meeting back and I went up and to the site and looked at it. Um, it. You know, in my heart of hearts, I still would rather have the second story element on the south subterranean. Um, but I understand the, the issues with marketing that kind of space. And I think given um, what you've got to work with, that it works. And I also, uh, appreciate the tucking in of most of the massing into the north side so it sort of blends in with the slope because that's really the whole idea of working with the land mm -hmm. um, and I think the this style works it to me it it's not an issue so much under our code of what architectural style you use it's really more how the massing fits in um, and I think we're definitely at the minor tweaking stage now so um, I think the question that's with us tonight is do we want to see this again and see some of those things or do we want to approve it and uh, defer to staff to try to resolve some of those issues well do we have a clear list of what those um, our staff have what modifications? So, uh, one of the items is to provide a corner window detail for the bathroom for the bathroom or the for the bathroom and also to um, rework the front entrance and entry door. Um, also to pick an expressive complementary color for the entry door and consider utilizing the full height side light application for the front entry door. Also to pull the chimney corner to the window frame alongside the chimney near the front entrance of the house on the north elevation and also to raise the brick plinth to the window sill base and that's going to be both for the north elevation and the west elevation in the front front of the house right and i think we also wanted to consider uh yeah. Yeah. glazing on the garage yes right and the the other thing is 
when you do the treatment of the bathroom corner window, consider it's it's a twin mm -hmm. and how, how that plays yeah. out. Because I, I don't know if the solution works, the same solution works on both, but. A lot of these, a lot of these things, these details here, uh, in mid-century modern, they get to be uh, much more important than in some of the previous styles where uh, uh, maybe uh, maybe you want to connect, maybe maybe you want some space with some siding in there, uh, uh, you know, uh, Victorian, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the older styles, uh, a lot of these things would be very, very debatable. But uh, when you get to mid-century modern, which was really a, a, a different kind of aesthetic, a very industrial aesthetic, uh, these these become highly important to the success of the the style, and and I think that we uh, we've just hit on a very very good list of things that may all seem like little adjustments, but are highly important. Okay, my only thing is the list isn't very exhaustive, but uh, covers a lot of elements that are on the front. Mm -hmm. So um, I have all the confidence that it can be handled, but it. I don't know if it's if we feel there's a comfort level in seeing that, you know, because it's like the front entry, you know, the corner, the bathroom corner window, the garage door, like all those tweaks affect what you're going to see right up front, you know. So it might be worth seeing that, but I don't know if that is that something the applicant would be amenable to to bring this back with those tweaks so we can take one last look at it. I think we're we pretty much. Uh, you can tell we have a consensus on the general design of the house, and we're really at the almost the last bit there. I would trust staff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, at, at this point, I think yeah. Uh, w w one of the one of the issues we have, I, I think, is that we we have certain findings we need to make, and I, I think we're we're talking about really. I think they're important design elements, but I think they're beyond our findings, yeah. and so we're really at the stage of giving free recommendation and <laughs> advice where this to me this project is approvable as is um, but if it were my house and I were building it I, <laughs> I would want to make some of these modifications so I, I think this is really an issue if the applicant wants to bring it back to us and get our feedback on their tweaks or if they want us to just uh, give this list to staff and and work it out with staff we, we feel we're comfortable with I think I understand where you're going with uh, in the direction, you're kind of cleaning it up. Do you feel you can implement most of that? I think so. I think none of them are difficult. Okay. I think um, the one we'll study the most is that window in the bathroom. Okay. But everything else is <laughs> is um, no problem. Okay. And the other um, option also is to appoint a subcommittee of one or two people to look at the revision to the design and and just to ensure clarity. Um, not coming back to the commission, but approving it tonight with that recommendation. I think that that's a great idea. I think yeah. that works really well. I'll volunteer. Okay. Sure, I would. Good. We've got our subcommittee. Now we just need a motion. Also move. Um, I'd second that. Okay. Let's have a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries unanimously. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your comments and Thank you. assistance. Yeah, good job. Have a good evening. You too. You too. Okay, now we will move to discussion phase. Uh, any planner commissioners have any reports? I have uh, nothing. We have one here. So, uh, I went to a city council meeting been to a number of city council meetings and one of the things the city council does is they acknowledge and give uh, attention and and recognition to achievements in the community and it occurred to me that the Planning Commission never does that <laughs> but we have a something that's taken place in the town that I think that that we should at least recognize in some way shape or form and and you're gonna laugh when you when you hear what it is I'm aware of but <laughs> if you've been by the Valero gas station lately mm -hmm. yeah he's redone the front of that with stacked stone he's 
And this is, you know, this is a gas station. He doesn't, he didn't have to do anything. I know they redid all the. Yeah. That, that I mean, he's put a lot of time and effort into making the gas station to be very aesthetically pleasing yeah. and repainting. And I, and I was like, yeah, way impressed because, you know, I expect it from some places, but I certainly didn't, you know, have a lot of money on the gas station, <laughs> you know, making that kind of improvements. And I was very impressed with that. And I was wondering if there's any way we, we could acknowledge that kind of contribution to the community because it's a building that everybody in town sees Uses, yeah. at least once a day as they're coming and going. And the guy put time and effort and money into making it a more aesthetically pleasing building. And it's like, well, that's pretty cool because normally, it, you know, as you can see, it takes us, you know, three meetings and, you know, some, you know, to get change done and change is happening, <laughs> you know, without a lot of, you know, our intervention. And it's, I, I was very, I found that refreshing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I think that that raises a bigger point of maybe we could have some sort of awards. Yeah. Maybe we could review, staff could suggest the best project that's at the staff level. You know, we could review the ones that we approve. Right? Sounds like with a lot of whereases on it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and you can stand up there and get your picture taken. Yeah, go. <laughs> I don't want to do it. You go. <laughs> there, there, I was impressed. There is this program um, <laughs> that I'm aware of having some projects nominated for it. Um, San Diego does it in their architectural foundation. It's it's called Orchids and Onions. So. They, <laughs> yeah, so people oh, nominate right. the public uh, through the website. They nominate projects as orchids or onions. So like projects that like you drive by and they're just s eyesores and like you know like a county whatever. The lawyer is wincing already. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give any onion awards. Let's do that. Not God, we're going to get city. sued again. <laughs> but um, but but the idea, the concept of giving architecture recognition, whether good or bad, um, I think it's not, I mean, it, it's a great idea because you, it, it actually brings awareness to things that you normally may, you just take for granted or you yeah. don't even notice. Um, I was, I was like real impressed. Like, look, he's doing all this work and it's, he didn't have to, there was nothing wrong with the old one, really. It was, it was a very functional building, you know, and you buy gas there. So what does it need to do? But so he made a contribution to this to the aesthetics of the city, and I thought, that, you know, at least some acknowledgement should be paid. I agree. Great. We we could, you know, I really support the idea that we could have some kind of of, of recognition thing going on here that it, it wouldn't go. It, you would not have to have been passed by uh, passed on by this commission, but it would be like open to anything in the in Whatever. the city. That, I don't know. That was really credible, I think, and, and, and interesting, and yeah. you know would, would. I think the elected people have a lock on this program, but anyway. So. <laughs> well, in in, in Pasadena, uh, the uh, uh, Design and Historic Preservation Department has uh, their own annual awards, and um, well, the the mayor always shows up at them, so I, I don't think that you know they're. Well, I, don't, I don't doubt that there'll be people showing up <laughs> to be in the picture. So. But uh, <laughs> it's a it's an annual it's an annual event, and it and it gives it gives good recognition to to, to different preservation projects. Uh, you know, I think the people that do the right thing should at least receive a nod. Absolutely, I, I think that's a great idea. Absolutely. And I would assume these projects would be constructed and not just in plan. So yeah, we may have some yeah. time to. To wait on some sure all right well, that's a good idea so where would where would the idea go from here if we like it well maybe staff can ruminate on yeah. you know yeah, we can't take any action on it yeah. tonight but something that no doesn't cost Just a lot throwing <laughs> the thought out <laughs> yeah you, you know you print <laughs> nice watercolored certificates yeah. i don't know <laughs> all right Key to the city plan. Do we have any uh, reports from staff? So our next planning commission meeting actually falls on the 4th of July, so we're planning on canceling that meeting. So our next meeting will take place on July 18th. We have two new CETT projects or Stonegate projects that we're going to be reviewing at that meeting. Okay, great. All right. 
with that, we will adjourn until um, July 18th.